In this video, we're just going to have a look at the templating functionality that's being introduced in WordPress. So this is a release candidate for 5.9. And if we head over here to appearance, you'll see that we have a new editor section. And we click on that. And now it's going to load the editor section. So on the website, you'll see we just have a standard website with the header. We have a footer. We have a couple of products. We have product pages. Um, there seems to be um, still one of the bugs to be ironed out is this repetition of items. And then you'll see that we have a footy here, the header. But if I head back to the home page, you'll see that the footer is different to that that was on the product page. So you can create different footers for different parts of the website as well as headers. So you can customize it to an extent. So if we look at the general layout, um, on the left hand side here, you'll see you have an option to go to your site, to go to your templates, and then to go to your template parts. So essentially, the templates are made up of template parts. So if I was to look at this page, for example, we have the header, which is the template part, the post content, which can either be the default content for that page, or you can insert your own content. And then we have the footer. So that's the standard layout for the website. Here at the top, you'll see you have an indication of what page or what element you're looking at. So we are looking at the template page large header. Indicates that there is a header and a footer area, as well as a header and a footer, which is indicated here. So whether I click here on header, or whether I click here on header or footer, you'll see that it then highlights the individual areas, or I can simply click on them. And then when I select an element, you'll see here in the block, that I'm able to then change, for example, I can change the font size, I can change it bold to thin. So this is where I can go ahead then and edit those elements. So if we were to head back then to the templates, and you remember that when we looked at the single product page, we had a different footer. So if you wanted to change a footer on the section, we would come in here, and now we would load up the single product template. So we look for the single product template. And here we have the single product template. Select the footer. When we select the footer, you'll see we have an option here to replace. Simply select replace. All the footers that you have available are listed. The footer that you have currently selected though won't be in the list. I select the new footer, save head over to the website and refresh and you'll see that the new footer has been inserted. If I wanted to do a global change to the website, so here I am and I'm on the uh, page, the single product page and I wanted to change perhaps say a color inside the header, I can then head over here to my um, itemized layered view of what's on the page. I'll head over to cover and now I'm going to change the color. Uh, let's change the color to for example orange. Save and now when I go to the website and refresh you'll see that the header color has changed and that the header color has changed for all the pages on the website. So if I wanted to have a specific header for a specific page so let's, for example, say that I wanted a specific header for a single product item. Then the best way to do that would not be to do it this way. Let's just save that back. So now when we refresh, that will return to, to black. If I wanted to create a separate header for that page, the best way to do that would be to head over here to my template parts. I'll add a new template part. It's going to be a header. I'll call this product header. And then I'll create that. And now to create that header, we head over here to add items. We'll go to patterns and I'll select headers. And you'll see here now that I can select different headers and maybe I want to go with something just quite simple. So Let's um, let's maybe just choose um, 
this one for example so let's see yeah we're happy with that simply save and now what I do is I go back to my templates now I'm going to go back to the single product then what I'm going to do is choose my header I'm going to replace and now you'll see that that's my product header one is there save and now when I go to the website when I refresh on the product page I'm going to have a different header to when I browse to the rest of the website so that's how um, easy it would be to change the header in a similar way you can change the footer now when it comes to the rest of the website there are a couple of other ways to customize so one of the new features as well is the styles editor and that allows me to adjust the typography the colors and the layout some elements there so under typography here we can change for example the font family at the moment it's on system font and I also have the an option for source serif pro so pretty limiting but then you can set the the line height the size and also the um, appearance of the font if we look at the colors so here you can see we have our palette our palette has 17 colors so we can come in and change those colors or leave the colors as they are the other thing that we can then do is set the default background color text color and links color on the website so we'll just leave that um, well, let's change the links to blue and then what we can also do then is in our palette you'll see we have an option here then to edit colors and if I wanted to add a custom color uh, let's call it uh, and maybe we call that dark red there we're done so now we have this custom color added to our palette so that will mean that when I'm editing a section let's remove that so if I was to edit a section here I would now have that custom color available to me straight away so that's how you can then add custom colors edit the typography a bit and then also we have some layout options here and pretty much the only one is padding and if you want to you could come in and change the default padding or just leave it on the default of zero and then you also have the option to reset all so that's all that's available at the moment right now let's have a look at some of the other sections for example if you wanted to create your own template parts so here under template parts I'm going to add a new one and let's say you wanted to do something for content then it would be under general and here maybe you're going to do uh, let's do a product listing create and using the elements here I'm going to head over to WooCommerce and I want to do a product search and then what I also want to do is add a list so let's see if I can get a list here um, can't really read that um, product by the right so we add all products so there we have the all products added and we also have a product search so what I can do now is on the right hand side if I open up this panel here then I can also select for example I can set the number of columns so four columns looks better and there we have our search and if I wanted to I could also add a product sidebar 
So what I'm going to do now is first just save that. And now if I want to change my product layout, I'm going to head over here to my templates. And I'm going to go to my product category. And what I'll do is I'm going to remove or replace that product listing with this new one. We'll save. Head over to the website. I'm going to head over to the shop. And let's go and have a look at a category and see if that is now showing. So as you can see, we're not seeing the updated listing. So that might just be a bug inside the system at the moment. So that's product listing two. So let's go to our templates. And let's change the product archive. So what I'm going to do now is remove or replace that with the new layout. Save. Head over to the website. Refresh. And still no change on the actual website. Let's go to shop. No, no change. And then let's go to the last template that we have available under our products. And that would be the product tag. And we'll replace that as well with the product listing. So that hasn't made a difference. So then I suspect that what we're inheriting here is just a page template. So let me go over to a page. And what I'm going to do now is add. And now I can simply type in template part. And now I choose an existing template part. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to go to my structure view here. These messages coming up here on the left hand side are really irritating because you can't see what you're busy with. So we want to just below the header. We'll paste that in there. Save. Now when I refresh the page, there we go. There we can see what that layout looks like. Unfortunately though, I've had to implement that on the page layout because that hasn't worked on the Um, on the shop layout so it will appear on some of the other pages now that's not necessarily an issue that can be worked around so here we have our products and we can do a search so let's search for beanie and see if that works so there we have the search results obviously still need to be formatted and set up properly so that's how we can then create a template part and then implement it and insert it on any page. Unfortunately, the um, at the moment, um, this seems to be a bug where the templates for WooCommerce aren't being applied on the category or archive or tag pages. So that's just to show. And of course, then using this library then of template parts and templates, you're able then to uh, customize pretty much every aspect of the website. Another new element that was introduced, and to have a look at this one, we're going to edit the home page. And so, what we'll do is we'll head over to the home page and and here we can just edit. And of course, the same query loop can be implemented on the um, on the home page, but it can also be implemented into a template. So for your archive page, for example. And here, for example, we can enter the query loop. So here we have the query loop on the page. And what we can do now is choose the layout so we're going to go with maybe a grid view so we have three across and the post type here if i want to i can stick with a standard post or i could introduce a product and then we would have the products and you'll see they're pulled through to preview let's stick to post 
the number of columns is three newest to oldest and then what I can do here is also edit the layout so I'm going to call this up and now you'll see that what I really want to do is include all of these in a different element so let's have a look and see if we can pull in a div no we can't so what we can do now is using this we can just move this then into the column the element um, let's take out the excerpt so, so we just have the title the image and I'm going to move the title then under and the reason I'm doing that then is so that I can come in here and I can add some padding update and now what we're going to do is with that done is we're going to preview the page and you'll see now that we have the header we have those products and then we have the post coming through on the home page what we can then also do under that query loop is just set the number of columns at the moment though you can't limit the number of posts that are displayed so in this case it has to be all the posts it can't be a limited number of posts if we have a look at this block here which is for the products here you can of course stimulate the number of columns and the number of rows and that will limit the number of items that are pulled through if we head back I'm just gonna update that then if we head back here to the website and we go to our post archive you'll see here that we have a content element where we've implemented the same post archive so here we have the various items we've created a grid view unfortunately that also still seems to be a bug on the website so what I'm going to do now is just go back to the site and if I go to the blog you'll see that the styles aren't applied so here we're just seeing it as a standard list view yet in our template parts and to show you how that works so yeah in the templates and I go to the archive display posts categories tags and other archives you'll see that we actually have created a section here with a different kind of archive view and that's not being used on the website so that's probably just a bug that needs to be resolved so with that in mind then um, on the shop section you'll see that that template also not being pulled through but you can create some um, nice uh, shopping views it doesn't have the power at the moment of a serious builder but it does allow you to very quickly and easily put together a, a layout for a very basic website um, but it has a way to go before it will be a serious contender in the um, building of sites in the way that most builders work however if you are familiar with CSS style sheets then it won't be too difficult to take a design for example and to format this in a better way won't be that difficult to do so if you're quite skilled you will be able to use this builder and start putting decent looking websites together and then of course it opens up the the war on the competition when it comes to the block builders within WordPress so that's going to open up another interesting space because if WordPress is able to generate good looking uh, content templates then the actual content on the page will then become the next area and I'm pretty sure that because of the integration of the blocks into the design of the template it does mean that it's very easy then to integrate your custom block designs into the template for the page. Thank you for watching.